What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a game that I'm hanging my hat on that I'm really hoping becomes kind of like the chosen one, and it seems like it's on that directive path. Uh, for right now, we're taking a look at Quasimorph. We've covered this game quite a few times in the past because it's a rad game that deserves to be covered. In my opinion, this is how early accesses should be handled and so we're going to be diving on in today taking a look at the game and seeing if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise take a pass on if you wanted to check the game out in early access i got a link for you down below in the description on top of that you can also take a look down there you can find a link to my discord and my twitch stream where i will be streaming this game on the day that this video goes live but for right now let me give you the brief synopsis on quasimorph Quasimorph, what is it? Why should you care? Why should you check the game out? Why do I speak so highly of it? Well, Quasimorph is another in those line of games that are trying to capitalize on the popularity of things like Marauders or Escape from Tarkov or Cycle Frontier, all those sorts of games in the respect that it is a it's an extraction roguelike. And so this is a game where you are a space mercenary that carries out... It's effectively Space Shadowrun, all right? You are a space mercenary... They give you jobs all over the galaxy, you go and do them, and based on the jobs you do, it manipulates a stock market that will make the prices of goods go up and down. You can trade with the factions, and the things that you have available will change uh, based on how well that corporation is doing on the overworld map, things of that nature. If you die, you lose all your stuff, and you start over from scratch at the beginning of the mission with a new mercenary, because in this title, all of your mercenaries are clones. And so for right now, I'm on a mission to move my way through an enemy facility and try to steal a prototype. In this game, you have options. You can do this stealthy. You can do this loud and proud. You can do it however you really want to do it. Am I still wounded there? All right, keep bandaging up my headpiece. I don't have enough... I don't have enough AP right now to do the things that I want to do. I don't think we need to go that way, so I'll probably leave those acolytes alone. Uh, you can do these missions loud. You can do these missions quietly. Just be forewarned that if you choose to do the mission quietly, uh, when things fall apart, you're going to be surrounded on all sides by things that really, really want to hurt you. This is not a universe that's grounded in reality either. It's mostly realistic with the factions you would expect being represented in the lineup. But, man... That skull fracture is just not going away. I've failed my recovery chance three times in a row now. We're going to have to get on top of this. Uh, but there's also a supernatural element to the game from whence, from whence the game derives... Let's see. From whence the game derives its name, Quasimorphosis. So at the bottom of the right side of the screen, you're going to see uh, that as we play the game, this number goes up over here. This is effectively how awakened things are in the area that you're operating. So this game assumes that there is another realm, the other side, uh, the afterlife, or maybe even sort of like warp, like in Warhammer 40k, that exists simultaneously alongside the real space, and in areas of catastrophic human pain, suffering, bloodshed, violence, and rage, it bursts through the other side, just like in Warhammer 40k if you wanted to deal with a god like Korn. And then when your enemies are close to death, they might explode into a shower of blood, leaving a terrifying demon standing in their wake. If this number gets up to 1,000, it will summon a demon boss. If you slay the demon boss, they drop cool artifacts that do interesting things. I have a couple of them right now on this playthrough, but I haven't really utilized most of them. I'm just going to start gatting these guys. I don't see any reason not to. I need to clear this way, though. So we'll just start throwing some lead down range. There we go. Let me go ahead and lock and load real fast. Oh, I've been shot. Beautiful. Is he using a viral weapon? No, not a viral weapon. Just a weapon with a high chance of infecting me, it looks like. All right, so we dropped a whole bunch of them over there. The good news is because I've got an infection, I can run a sorbent on it. That'll get rid of it. And then from there, if we treat the wounds that are currently on our body, it should fix it. The thigh wound shouldn't matter. It's a minor wound, which means it'll regenerate and go away on its own. But if we get hit there again, it's providing pain. Pain threshold, I think, makes the quasi-morph go up faster or something like that. I haven't actually really watched it the entire time while I've been playing the game. We've got another manager over there. Let's go ahead and sling some lead at him. Uh, we dropped him. Good. S Ow! They're behind me! Well, that's not ideal. Does that guy have a gun? 
Doesn't look like he has a gun, but we are getting embroiled in kind of a a pretty nasty dogfight right here. That's gonna cost us with our quasi morph. Go ahead and fix my knee fracture with a splint. Don't worry about it. All this wild and crazy damage that you're taking, uh, it's all temporary because you're a cloned super soldier. Oh, my gun hasn't reloaded yet. There we go. Now my gun is reloaded. Uh, you are a cloned super soldier who heals and who R and R's at a very fast rate compared to the general population. So try not to stress about it too much. Uh, these acolytes right here. Oh, these are actually mind slaves that they're throwing at me. So this universe is very dark. This very universe is very morose. Good things don't really happen in this universe. All right, you are a terrible person working for terrible people. Pretty much the entire universe is oppressed at this point. Can I fix my handyman pants? I can fix my handyman pants. My, they shot my pants off my body, dude. I'm just standing here with my loins hanging out in the breeze. And we got anything else in here that's any good? We got some rubberized stuff, but nothing that I really want. That guy's going to charge me, so I'm going to put him down real quick. You can disassemble every single item in the game. This game does have quite a large crafting tree that you will run into as you play it. I guess these guys are just wearing rubber suits. That doesn't really help me out too much. All right, throw all that stuff out there. Those are crafting materials that are not altogether necessary right there. Big robo buddies got to get murdered. And let's talk about this. So we've got our HP down here. This is a survival roguelike as well. So we do have to feed ourselves and water ourselves. I justify it. I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is canon. All right. I can't tell you if this is canon or if I've just made this up. But I justify it as your hunger meter goes down super fast in this game while you're only on deployment for a couple hours. I justify it as you being a super soldier. That's the way that I view it, is that you're a clone, you're a super soldier, there's obviously going to be some kind of weird kinks and snags in the way that we function. And what are those right there? Tactical boots? If I Can I repair those with that right there? I cannot. Okay. What about with that right there? I can with that right there, so we can fix it with medium armor plates. Good to know. Just be forewarned that every time you fix an object, or every time you make something a little bit better... Uh, there is, you know, it loses durability permanently. This is a somewhat new character that I'm playing right now. As your characters survive conflicts and they make it through gunfights and battles and things of that nature, they do level up, they do become stronger. The game has a wide selection of classes that you can unlock as you're playing through the game. That's one of the principal forms of the game sort of unfolding and giving you a metagame progression is that no matter how many clones you throw into the blender and no matter how many of them die the cool thing about clones is that you can just print another one if you need more of them however the things that they tend to extract from missions uh, so in this case that would be things like crafting resources weapons things that you stockpile inside of your starship, which right now for me is orbiting this space station. But the things that you stockpile, uh, you can use them in future missions. And we're fully healed up now. That's good. I think our character actually kind of has a little bit of weak health going on. But then again, this character hasn't leveled up very much either. Hey, there's an auto dock up here. I'm going to use that to heal myself back up to full. We want to remember that this auto dock is over here. Ow. Ow, ow, okay, they're using fully automatic shotguns. Let's go auto mode. There we go, spray them down, let them have it. An infection's only gonna get worse though, I gotta take an antibiotic. Door closed, that's good, that's gonna force him to burn a turn. See if we can light him up right there, and then while we, oh my god, I am super messed up right now. Okay, I'm dressed up like a mummy at the moment. Use the auto dock to heal our health back up, and then also use that. Well, we'll wait till after the fight. Uh, let's start a reload. The robot should be slow by comparison to the rest of these guys. Drop the robot. We got another security guard right there. Shot him twice. Shot him thrice. Shot him four times, and he's still not dead, huh? There we go. My man was rocking that thick boy armor. How much ammo do I have left? 12? 
Man, those guys were hitting me with the lead spitters, dude. I came around that corner and was not expecting, yeah, our gear is pretty much all broken right now. Not so great. The universe does get more difficult, so what you're seeing right now is probably two or three hours on into the game. The universe does get more difficult as you play. It does push back against you harder. As you become a more famous mercenary, more people become aware of you uh, that you typically probably do not want aware of you. Let's go over here, and we will heal a wound. That's all that that did for us, huh? We might have been better off going for something else right there. But there's a couple of dead guys over here. We may be able to get to them. And if I can disassemble some cloth off of them, we may make it out of this. Unfortunately, the rags do not cause me to regenerate. I was not expecting this room to be as hyped as it ended up being. Uh, we'll go ahead and disassemble that right there. Just gave us plastic and rubber. Not really that helpful. Throw that all out. I'm going through resources at a very rapid rate right now. We're going to die of trauma if our bandages end up not working here and we fail our dice rolls. And move back up to there. Put it in full auto mode. There we go, we got him. I was willing to dispense a little bit more ammunition if it meant we dropped him fast enough. It does look like we actually healed all of our wounds. So that's not the worst thing that's ever happened. What I would like to see though, swap out this for the rifle because it shoots further. Uh, you can hot swap in between weapon sets in this game. We'll thumb load that real quick. Look around, make sure nobody's running up on us. Oh, another auto dock, dude. We got so lucky right there. Oh my God, that's the best thing that's ever happened to me in the history of the game. Uh, let's go ahead and start sniping these nerds. There are classes uh, that have respective play types. So for example, I'm playing right now. Well, that's not great. Oh, the quasi-morph's getting up. That right there is our first quasi-morph that we've got to deal with. I'm going to push him back a little bit. There we go. We killed him off because he's an exploder. Uh, he blows up, and then when he blows up, it's not great for us. Let's go ahead and thumb load real quick. We'll see if we can pick up anything good off these bodies. If the bodies are stacked up, there will be tabs right here that you can take a look at. Uh, we got an Eye of Karak. That's good. I'll go ahead and use that. We also have a Gavik over here. Uh, so there are things from the other side that your character can utilize to survive, but as with all deals with the devil, they all come at a cost. And so in this case, we can eat that Gavik. It will instantly heal us up to full health. It will instantly heal all of our wounds, but uh, the downside to Gavik is that it's addictive. And so every time you use it, there's a chance that you will get addicted uh, to... Oh, I've got three right there. Nice. Uh, there's a chance that you will get addicted to kind of like demon zombie drugs. That's much, much worse. You can also get addicted to human drugs in this game, like morphine and stuff like that, if you end up utilizing it too much. However, uh, the demon infections and like the the demon the, the, the demon sort of addictions are way, way, way more difficult to get rid of. They can be a little bit of a headache. And so just keep your eye on the prize there. I don't actually want to equip those. I wanted to disassemble those to see if I could get a couple more bandages. I've got enough armor plates to where I can fix most of my gear up. I do need to track down some weapon repair stuff. I would say unload the ammo from there. We'll disassemble you. That gave us a pipe. Not what I was going for. But the intrusion is growing. Now, my mission in this map is to find a prototype and extract with it. They've put up a really good fight so far, which has led me to believe maybe I'm not going to survive this. But that shoots shotgun shells as well. Oh, no, dude. I was hoping it was like a, a burst fire pistol. All right. Well, let's get the robot real quick. We'll get some of these nerds in heavy armor. We've got a demon spawn right there. He's going to fight the demon, so we kind of want to pull back and get to a defensible position. We'll snipe that guy. We'll thumb load our rifle real quick.
Enemies can also use offensive grenades. Uh, where's the grenade? I don't actually see a grenade being thrown. That makes me feel nervous. Oh, they threw a grenade at the Quasimorph. Fantastic. Go ahead and thumb load another round. Oh, good. They're going to fight. Oh, the Acolyte got him, dude. I didn't expect that. And then I got the Acolyte. Beautiful. Let's uh, see if we can reload. And as long as we don't miss, we should be okay here. That was not what I needed to deal with right now. Another Quasimorph. We're going to need to find some ammo. Ammo is going to be our main problem here. We need ammo very, very badly. So if I can find some of the ammo, we might be okay. There's a data miner. Yeah, go ahead and use it. It'll reveal the map for us. That way we can see where everything's at. I thought I saw them drop. Oh, he's got a pressure mine right there, too. I do have ammo for that pistol. So what I'm going to do now is we'll strip the shells out of there. We'll reload that bad boy. We'll throw what we can into the shotgun. I don't really have that much right now. I wasn't expecting to go through over 60 shotgun shells in here. That was not an intended part of my gameplay experience. Once again, our character is very fragile because he is a new clone. And I think he needs some Moo Moo in order to get like his hunger meter back up. All right, hunger meter's back up. I will take the landmine. It may be useful. At oh, we got another Gavik right there, huh? Yeah, Gavik is really, really good. It's only a 15% chance on a D100 to get addicted when we use it. There's also a military first aid kit over here, which is actually kind of baller. Does this thing, we've got rapid fire on it? It's got bad accuracy, but we'll see how it goes. Something's inside of there, because you can see the blood pools everywhere. If I get tagged with that rifle, it's really going to hurt. The nice thing about pistols is that they reload very rapidly. That's kind of like the benefit to running pistols. I don't know if I can handle this Quasimorph. It looks like he's got resistances versus everything but cut. My shotgun does cut damage, so kind of is what it is. You are going to want to check the resistances on your enemies. This electronic device right here is what we came for, so that should get us out of here. Mission complete. Good job. Go back to the elevator and we'll pick you up. I'm, I'm working on it. One step at a time here. One step at a time. A Dr. Jones surgical kit. I probably want that more than I want the armor plates. There is no money in this universe. That's another thing that you're going to want to rapidly internalize. Uh, somehow, I can't explain to you exactly how, but an entire intergalactic economy functions entirely on the barter system. So that is going to be something that you want to keep in mind as you go through the game. Are the slugs... What kind of damage do the slugs do? Blunt? Okay, well, I got the prototype. Let's get the hell out of here. This character survived his first deployment, which is better than we can say for 90% of the clones that I deploy to various areas. Is there going to be any more loot around? No. Okay, signal's been lost. That guy got gibleted. Was there anything sick down this way? What's his resistance versus blunt? Pretty good, but we stunned him. Oh, there's another one right there. Okay, I think we just leave then. Is that another Gavik on the ground right there? I'll take another Gavik too. Gavik is good. Let's evac. Now, when you complete a mission... The faction of choice that you decided to work for is going to award you a number of items. These are taken from a loot pool where the, air, where the rarity and also the efficacy of those items, they change around on a percentile base based on how popular the corporation is and how well their market is trending and also how much they like you. So we gave the Sunlight Coven the representative a prototype and they gave us something that they would like to test in the field. We changed the worst for the bad, of course, but it was an honest job. And so it looks like they gave me a TV dinner. It looks like they gave me a high caliber pistol. It looks like they gave me some au jus. And it looks like they gave me a mind chip, which will unlock a new mercenary. 
not only do your clones have different names and whatnot, your clones are different people, effectively. And the clone technology has been lost throughout the galaxy. As you're fighting your way through these facilities and whatnot, you will find those mind chips, and those mind chips will give you not... I mean, so in some cases, they will give you flatly better mercenaries, just upgraded versions of previous mercenaries that you have that start out with higher stats, they start out with higher damage, they start out with higher accuracy, better movement, you know, that kind of stuff. However, there are also alternate characters that do the same thing as another character, but they've had their stats moved around a little bit so that they can more frequently fall back on melee, or maybe they get an extra movement point every now and again while having slightly less accuracy. You can take a look at them when you're in the cloning vats when you go out for a mission. There is an entire space system you can play around in. And the reason why we're covering the game is because this game just churns out updates. Like, these developers are putting out content, like, every couple months, basically. And they are meaty, chunky content patches that add new planets. Uh, with the most recent patch, they added the first storyline quests. Uh, so, for, so the first three or four missions of the actual narrative campaign are in now about your mercenary company making a deal with the devil on the other side of the warp. Uh, for what purposes, I haven't gotten that far into the storyline just yet, but I have gotten the blessing of, like, an elder being on the other side after a couple of missions uh, because I dedicated all my kills to him and he absorbed kind of their life essence and now he likes us. Each of these areas is populated by space stations uh, that have different corporations in control of them. Over the flow of the game and your missions, these stations are going to flop in between different corporations, uh, the people that you work for. So, for example, Daydream something is respond. They are the beneficiaries, so they're the ones that are hiring us here. And then Grasshopper Tech are the people that are defending. Obviously, Grasshopper won't like us if we take this mission, and Daydream will like us even better. But there's also stations that are at peace. Uh, stations that are at peace, you can take the list of items right there that they have, and if you bring them those items and you drop them off with a representative of their faction, they will give you items from their loot list. And I think it affects your, I think it'll affect your reputation as well, although I haven't tested that part just yet in the current patch. So take that with a grain of salt. On your ship, you can store up all the gear that you've extracted from various missions and various contact points. All of your gear gets fully repaired every single time you bring it back to the ship. So don't worry about breaking gear or anything else like that. With the machine gun, what does that do? Piercing damage? I'm always, like, really hesitant. So the demons in this game have really high resistance versus everything but cutting. This makes, because the demons show up pretty much every single mission, you don't know what you're going up against in terms of humans, but you always know there's going to be demons spawning by the time you get to the second or the third floor. That means that shotguns in the current meta are 100% like the meta choice. Uh, most things do not have cutting resistance in this game. And if they do, it seems to be lower than a lot of other resistances. You'll come across the occasional, like, commando or something that has very, very high resistance to cutting. But by and large, the piercing, the blunt damage types, they tend to work better against humans, whereas cutting damage tends to work a lot better versus demons, and also works reasonably well versus humans. So I tend to run just a ton of shotguns in this game. You do have a sort function inside of here. I need to sort out and fix my inventory, but let's find ourselves a job. We have a conquest over here. It'll take us seven days to get there, and it's got a 10-day duration on it, so I'm going to go ahead and trigger that. Inside your ship, you can manufacture and craft all kinds of useful things. I highly recommend you take a look at the loot list and figure out what it is you want to produce uh, before you jump into other areas. I'm going to make some shotgun shells because I'm always low on shotgun shells. I never have enough shotgun shells ever. On top of that, I'll probably make an armor vest on my way over there before we make the jump. So let's go to our system map, and we're going to do this conquest. Uh, this means we have to kill pretty much like 60 or 70% of their forces inside of their base. Uh, there is comms chatter and things like that while you fly around. Occasionally they'll offer you storyline quests. I'm hoping that when the game is done, like this is kind of an infinitely expandable game, so I'm hoping it sells well enough that the developers get to work on it for a really long time. Because there's a lot of cool things here. It's kind of like Jupiter Hell 
in terms of gameplay, which makes it really, really good. Jupiter Hell's a fantastic game, but on top of that, it also has that layer of Tarkov and, like, reputation and corporate espionage and shadow run inside of there. You can get demon weapons in this game. There are There's actually a demon corporation that they've made while you're in that neighborhood. I'll probably go with Isabella, since we're going to be shooting a lot of people. It feels like I probably want to bring my shooty character. We'll bring 50 Buckshot with us. Uh, we will bring a sorbent in case we get an infection. We will bring some bandages. We are going to have to, I think, disassemble some stuff before too long. I don't really care about the demon weapons. I'm not a huge fan of the demon weapons. They've got these things called Igvus launchers. And the Igvus launchers... They're okay. They do cold damage. Most things don't have resistance to cold damage. The downside with Igvis launchers is that they usually are not burst fire. There's a couple that are. Oh, yeah, we got that new mercenary, too. So we got Priya Marlin. Is she good? Let's see here. So Priya Marlin looks like she has decent shooting range. She has a plus four item capacity. She has a higher pain threshold than everybody else. She has a lot more food that she carries with her when she starts out. She's got a high dodge chance. She's got decent melee accuracy and pretty bad crit. So basically, she's the one you want to bring if you're going to be looting like crazy and you want the extra item slots. The character that I'm playing right now ignores infections, so actually we don't need that right there. Ignoring infections is a huge, huge come up in this game uh, because it limits the amount of antibiotics and other stupid stuff you got to carry around with you in order to stay alive. The downside is this lady has like the smallest stomach on earth, so she gets hungry really, really, really quickly. Like crazy quickly and so that's the downside to her having immunity to one of the game's principal character killers if your character gets a full 100 percent infection you're pretty much dead that's just the way the game works 10 seconds to landing clear the station for capture be methodical uh, so security guards kyoko no ie realize that the battle is lost when we kill half of them they will lay down their weapons all right, so let's send in our super soldier and see what we can get done here. Uh, in terms of my impressions of the game thus far, I like it. I'm a huge fan of it, and it's a game that I am really, really hoping and praying turns out to be something awesome. I think it personally will turn out to be something awesome just because I've been covering and playing it for a really long time. Let's go ahead and zap you real quick. Uh, there are still things that need to be worked on. Uh, so, for example... There are things like the balance in this game. Uh, things like the resistances that I talked about. These are all things that are going to need to be fiddled with as time goes along uh, in order to get the make all the weapons useful for all kinds of stuff. But right now, they're still kind of in that phase uh, where they're just implementing content. And so I'm guessing they're going to come back through with the balance mechanisms later on. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were fooling around with a title called Quasimorph, which I think is really, really fantastic. I think it's a rad game. I'm going to step back over here. Hold down control. He he's not dead, huh? Wow. Okay. Yeah, that guy's pretty heavily armored. Was that a scientist? Well, he's a dead body now. He ain't science in nothing but the soil. As I was saying, uh, there are balance issues here, and there are obvious gaps in the content where it is very, very clear that the developers are going to add something there or improve something there later on in the future of the game. Things like the stock market and whatnot are kind of underutilized at the moment, but that's because those are mechanics that are in the process of being refined on out. And so this is one of those games that every month or two I come back and I play for another eight or nine hours, haven't been able to stop myself, and for me personally, that's usually a sign of a pretty dope game. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. I appreciate you all being here. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were fooling around with Quasimorph. Tomorrow, it will be something else. Don't forget to swing through the stream if you feel like you didn't see enough of this game and you wanted to see more of it. 
I will be streaming this game from a fresh playthrough on the day that the video goes live so that we can get some ultra fun mercenary experiences unfolding live and with my reaction. I'll see y'all later and uh, I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Bye folks.